Are you feeling what Phil Spencer had to say at the Xbox Game Showcase this week? Let's discuss that. I'm Ryan Dawes. And I'm George Lim. So, Xbox kicked off with one of their big franchises, Fable. Yes, long-awaited Fable. There's not been a, a proper Fable game for about 13 years, 14 years, something like that. Yeah, so this looks like it's going to be a kind of a bit of a light reboot. But obviously it's developed by Playground Games, mm -hmm. which Famous is for Horizon. Forza Horizon. So yeah. it's a big departure. So a lot of people were quite nervous whether yeah. they can actually take on this task. Yeah, so it was announced in 2019 uh, during the naughty three back then. Uh, and people were immediately like, don't screw it up. Like, yep, you've got to have the cannot. humor there. you got to have, it's got to be British. Playground Games, British studio. And I think it's safe to say after this trailer, they're in safe hands. Yeah, I mean, they had Richard Ayuadi. Yeah. So you I open mean, with off. his face or, you know, his voice. OK. Let's do it. And then we saw a chicken, of course, being punted. Yeah. And we were like, this is definitely a fable game. It's a gorgeous game mm -hmm. already. And I think people are already like, OK, I think they've, they've hopefully managed to capture the magic of the old games. Um, but yeah, people are really excited for this one. Yeah, it looks in safe hands. So next we had Star Wars Outlaws. Mm -hmm. Now this looks interesting because it's developed by Massive and it's claimed to be the first open world Star Wars game, which I feel like the developers of the MMO Star Wars The Old Republic would probably debate a little bit, but all the same. I mean, this looks great. People thought it was a reboot to things like Battlefront and stuff, but I think this is more of a linear story and I think people ought to be excited for Star Wars. Now let's talk about Payday 3 because of we tend to share just very high level notes but I briefly saw I think one of your more detailed ones and I think we differ quite a bit here. Okay so I think Payday 3 looks good. I it might be because I was I'm quite a big fan of Payday 2 mm -hmm. um, but you know heisting game graphically it was hit and miss on, on stage I think a little bit but I really like Payday as a franchise and again if this comes to Game Pass, then then I'm, I'm all in. This is it. I mean, it's sort of risk-free to, to exactly. try games on Game Pass, which is the good thing. But yeah, it's interesting you mentioned graphics there because that was my main note, is that this really looked more like a sort of Xbox 360 era game mm -hmm. compared to sort of everything else that was shown that was really sort of quite cutting edge. Yeah. Now, Avowed was, before Xbox acquired Bethesda, going to be Xbox's competitor to Elder Scrolls which is obviously a big, big undertaking. But we didn't see much of that until this conference. And it's looking like it could easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Elder Scrolls. Which they're now competing with themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, in that terms, is completely redundant. I mean, it's being overseen by Obsidian, who obviously yes. created Fallout New Vegas, probably the sort of most beloved um, game in that series. So, I mean, we shouldn't be surprised that it's looking good. But... Yeah. I mean, we're not going to be seeing anything about Elder Scrolls 6 for at least another 10 years anyway. So, yeah. Which Todd Howard has said will probably be his last game. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, Legend might be leaving the industry relatively soon. Wow. So next we had Monkey Island Sea of Thieves. I was very excited about this. See if these is a very, you know, it's kind of a cult favorite now. Uh, I think it's one of those games where you can dip in and out of it and you don't really have to sort of commit too much time to it. Mm -hmm. I was a big fan of the original Monkey Island games. I wasn't such a big fan of the new reboot one, like, uh, Return to Monkey Island. Yep. Uh, but I may now check it out because of the Sea of Thieves tie-in. It looked awesome. The comedy was there. It looks like a sort of more solo island where there's a lot more sort of puzzles yeah. and that kind of thing, which, which will probably... You know. They're releasing it in three episodes, so there's there's a lot of content that's going to be coming to this. Mm, definitely. Next we saw Flight Simulator, or an update to Flight Simulator. Now, my issue with Flight Simulator is that I've always just found flying boring. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're big into planes, then, you know, it's, it's, it's full on plane porn in yeah. there but you know if you once you've taken off um then it's just kind of like well am i just doing nothing now until yeah, yeah. i just land on the other side whereas this they're bringing in all sort of like rescues and that kind of thing into yeah. it basically every aerial job yeah basically, is basically what it's constructing showed. towers yeah. or you're rescuing people from mountains it's got it all yeah so switching from flight porn to car porn we had forza 7. this is obviously xbox's gran turismo competitor whereas forza horizon is a bit more arcadey yeah. this is very kind of in-depth uh, for those who are really sort of into their racing i am very bored of just driving around driving in circles around essentially so it's not really for me but for those people i mean this just looks insane now i think i'll leave the next one to you because this is definitely your game overwatch 2. yeah overwatch 2 so there's been a lot of controversy around overwatch 2 recently they've gone free to play so you can now dip in and out whenever you want and kind of not feel that pressure of having to buy the game mm -hmm. um but part of it is they've gone to a season pass model with a shop and everything 
Um, and when they announced Overwatch 2, one of the big selling points was uh, story modes and hid hero trees and sort of RPG style talent. Mm. Trees and I mean, that's like that. what I was really interested in. I mean, they announced all the sort of campaign stuff. And I was like, oh, this is actually going to cater for people like me. Yeah. It's not really like into the into the PvP side so much anymore. So when they cancelled it just a few months ago, I was like, gutted. But then they suddenly seem to revive it. Yeah, so they're bringing the story mo missions in and they're bringing a co-op mode in, which is some something else I'm really interested in. Um, but one of the things is they're not bringing those talent trees and that's the thing that people are really sad about because that gave us new hero, hero abilities uh, and new ways to sort of play with the same, sort of the replayability element. Mm -hmm. That's not coming. That's still being parked. But in terms of story missions, we're getting some new ones later this year uh, in August, I believe. Um, and it, it may be something that even drags me back into Overwatch 2 because I've not played Overwatch 2 in a long while. Interesting. Now, I think it's fair to say that a lot of games now are basically copycats. The only one that kind of stood out to me as being something really quite different is Jusant. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember this. This was the sort of almost rock climbing simulator type Yeah, game. this did look odd. I wasn't... A rock climbing simulator is kind of all the way I could describe it. I mean, it's not great for people like me who have a terrifying fear of heights, probably. <laughs> that was immediately my thought when I watched it. <laughs> I mean, you put me in that VR rock climbing game once and... <sighs> I didn't think a VR game was going to like affect me that mm. much, but it does. Uh. Another game which did seem at least slightly different is a game called Still Wakes the Deep. Now this looked very similar to one that was shown at the IGN Summer Games Showcase the other day mm -hmm. uh, called Like Under the Waves. My only complaint with that was that it looked a little bit slow paced. Right. It had the intrigue there, but this looks like a nice sort of mix of the action and the intrigue. Yeah, I, I, it, was a, it was one of those games which kind of got away from me. Um, you know, I was watching it, I was like, it's not something I'll probably pick up. Again, mm -hmm. Game Pass, I'll probably at least... You know, they just give it a go. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's another one that I think... I think a lot of these studios are trying to make games that are slightly different, and I appreciate that, because I'm kind of I'm kind of done with the, the shooters and the all, all of the sort of very samey, same games. Yeah. So, moving on to Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is probably quite similar to a lot of other games, really. Yeah, well... But I think this might as well be renamed Idris Elba's James Bond audition, which I'm totally here for, to be Featuring honest. Featuring Keanu Reeves. Featuring Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Which is a hell of a sidekick. It's, it was... It's, <laughs> the new Bond girl was Keanu Reeves. <laughs> it's a DLC to, to Cyberpunk 2077, and um, it's got Idris Elba in it. And when they say Idris, featuring Idris Elba, I expected... Featuring the voice of Idris No, he's in it. He's actually there. Yeah, <laughs> as himself. Next on the list, we had City Skylines 2. Mm -hmm. So again, it's one of those games which has little incremental updates that make me go, oh, I want to play this. Um, I'm always big, I'm, I like City Skylines quite a lot. You know, I had my own city running on the Xbox for, I think, uh, a couple months, actually, before I found another game and started playing that. But City Skylines 2 looks like it comes back with a lot more features and a lot more granularity granularity mm -hmm. um, good job yeah yep. uh, where you can do things you can even like model the car parks mm -hmm. in like certain buildings which is something that i didn't realize i wanted to do in a city builder yeah. game it looks crazily in depth i, I was a big fan of sim city but mm -hmm. mainly because i would build these big extravagant cities and then just unleash natural disasters on them <laughs> which i yeah. don't think you can do in this so it's probably I, not i think you can oh can you yeah oh, then i am interested next we've got the new bioshock game yes We're, which is weirdly titled clockwork revolution Instead. And not, not it's not a Bioshock it, game. Yeah, it's not really anything. <laughs> it's not got like, anything to do with Bioshock. But as soon as it came on screen, I, everyone, everyone went, went that's Bioshock? Bioshock Infinite, that's isn't it? Bioshock. Yep, definitely. Uh, it looks really interesting um, with the time travel element, mm -hmm. um, which even I was like, okay, I could get on board with this. But it, it looked like Bioshock. It was absolutely a game. It was like, we're going to just fill the void while we're working on the maybe the next Bioshock game. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So my partner was also watching this and made an interesting comment where she hopes that a lot of the time elements will actually turn into branching narratives mm -hmm. so that when you actually go back and make that a different cool. choice, then it, it will sort of affect going forward in the future, which we're going to have to see more of this game to see whether yeah. that's actually the case. The last game actually wasn't announced during the Xbox showcase, and that's Sonic Superstars. I was buzzing. I messaged you and I was like, we've got to, we've got to we cover, got to we've got to cover this. And you went, oh, what, what, what have you, what, what are you, what are you teasing me now? It's like, it literally, that's what that was. A literal okay. blue ball. Sonic Superstars is a reimagining of Sonic. Brand new levels, no green hill zone, which is no way. Which is say, controversial. That's... Yeah, right. No repeated things, no chemical plant, but it looks amazing. 
you can play as uh, Sonic, Knuckles, Tails, and Amy Rose. It's a four-player couch co-op game, right? Akin to Mario's new Super Mario. That's going to be super interesting. Su- I'm excited to play this. I knew you would be as soon <laughs> as I saw this. But I've got a weird thing with with the sort of 2D uh, platform in Sonic sort of classic mm-hmm. type games. So I used to play it a lot when I was sick. So now whenever <laughs> I play it, I've got this weird psychological thing where I just start feeling a little bit nausea straight away. Oh dear. So it'll be interesting whether this has changed enough for me to get over that. Well, Sonic team aren't involved, so it's going to be good. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I didn't realise that was just the bar that, that needed to be set. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice we didn't talk about the big game during this video, which was Starfield. Uh, and that's because Xbox kind of showed a little bit and then they had an entire 45 minute direct after the showcase to talk about that's exactly what we're gonna do yep in a couple of days yeah so stay tuned for that be sure to subscribe what did you think about the export showcase uh we want to know your comments leave them below please um and until next time we will see you